the Crowded Training for Intermediate User, today there's three topics that we mainly focus on. Creating data lenses, story, and graphs. These are all can be created by using data that already existed in Socrata or you can always upload your own data if that's what you want. Fill to an existing table to get specific information that will apply to data mainly that's already existed or somewhere lying around in the story. Lastly, we will remove any field from the table view in an old-fashioned way compared to the SQL way. So this is like taking out a column in your Excel sheet. So these are Socrata 101 that all existed source somewhere in Socrata in the resource folder. Uh, if you look through it, it will be somewhere in Socrata on the front page just says Socrata 101. So when you click on how to use Socrata it will give you a whole information how to use a crata and then all the story. So these three are mainly focused on the topic that we're covering today. So creating data lenses, creating a story, creating visualization. So all these are well documented in the story. You can always access this in Socrata for further detail. They're all in there. But for today's training purposes, I'm mostly going to do a demo to explain how each one going to go step by step. So let's get started. So to begin, you have to upload your own data or you already have a data somewhere like in Socrata or a data you want to use in Socrata. So for my cases, I already did. Uh, you wonder how I get into this page. Um, you can just click on top and say SN and that will lead you directly to the SN page. Uh, this is mean all the SN that sort of exists in Socrata. There's a couple one that owned by me and a couple one owned by Dan and there's over 1450 amounts of data already exists and information. You can take any of them but for today I'm just gonna look at my SN for example. So let's say, let's look at this one, responsible persons join. So I already own this table view that I already created. So to create visual, you simply click visual and launch visualization. Once you do, you will get into this page specifically on configuring um, visualization. So it's a select a type of data. So basically it means you just click any dimension. So for this one, it was responsible person. So let's look to responsible person. So when you click responsible person, it will show you the number of responsible person all existed in PSS and you can click on pie chart that will show you a number. There's 109 people that's probably blank. And then you click on that hierarchy. So these things work like a hierarchy ish, which call, that's why I call hierarchy. So let's say responsible person, and next one I'll select will be, uh, let's say it will be project title. That means that when I click, on any of these, let's just say 71, which belong to Starling. When I click into it, it will lead directly into project title. So this is all the project that Sterling is working on. Of course, it doesn't have to be a pie chart. It can be a line graph, a histogram visualization or it can be scatter combined chart and there's calendar there's a map and there's mostly bar chart and a column chart it's there's many visualization it's depend on what you want to present in general but let's say I just want to see the responsible person and you can get so all these belongs there because I clicked it. So you can take out that. 
add and subtract feel free to play around with it but the point of this training is that to understand that this visualization sort of existed and and that's how you use it and you can present it horizontal vertical so responsible person project ID that's what I did of course you can always add more like um, let's say island and then Furrow ID and project ID, field office, accelerator, accelerator. So these hierarchy work like this. It begins as a responsible person because that's the first thing we select. So when you click on like Paul, for example, it will go directly to island. So Paul has um, Maui's 14 project on Maui and then four on Molokai and couple of Lanai. Not sure why, but let's look at Maui. So if you click Island, it will go directly to the Fred ID, which is all these projects. When you click on, let's say it was this one, you'll get the project ID, which there's only one project ID for one Fred ID. Makes sense. When you click this Fred ID, you got Maui, the office design for. Of course, you can easily change this hierarchy based on however you want for whatever you want to present. And we have measurement. That doesn't apply to me, but if it apply to you, great. And then we have like show how many you want to show, for example. So let's just take this out, go back to this. So you switch around. Oh, if you're wondering how you go back from the bottom to the top, it's, it's this dragging up button. So we're just going back from, I don't know, from island back to responsible person from project ID, back to fair ID, back to island and back to responsible person. You simply click through and drag it up and you can even click hierarchy, it will show you specifically which hierarchy you're on. So let's say responsible person, I just jump directly to project ID. Of course, that's not gonna work. Because it didn't, oh. That didn't work specifically to what you want because you don't know whose project ID this is, but this is all the project ID that already existed at this point. And then we also have Axie, if you want to customize it, like how wide that you want. So there's only one project in this case, from zero to one, which makes sense. There's only one project per project ID. Let's say you maximize it, uh, minimize it to something else. Okay, let's go back to responsible person. Let's just say. And then for the title of this graph that I created, let's just say, call it person. And then we can easily create some kind of description. So it will say person somewhere on the top. So this is your own personal little graph that you can control and you can call it however you want. You can change the color to red, let's say. And then you can even change the label to up, down, right, or entirely depending what you want. And then we have axis title, which means left axis, which Responsible person, I'll just say RP for short. On the bottom, I'll just say numbers of responsible person. On the top, that's entirely up to you how you want to set it. And then customize mean like minimize how much person showing this graph. For example, then this graph is showing zero to over 97. That's a max. You can minimize how much you want to show. By clicking this button, let's say minimum of zero and then maximum is let's say ten. So as you can see on this graph, it changed the maximum is ten, but when you look through it, it will still say the actual number. And then we have other filtering and label that's up to you to play around with. But at the end of the day, it's depend on how you want to decorate it. And then there's always this filter. So this filter works exactly like a hierarchy list. For example, if I look through it, it will have a drop down box like who specifically. 
I'm looking for let's say let's just back to staring if we click to him oops staring apply and then we'll scroll down and we'll say apply somewhere but anyway these filter are after you're done creating a graph and they work corresponsibly if you want to create filter that's how you create it but they expect takes this core response what whatever chart you're showing let's just say I'm done after I'm done I just say save the draft and it'll ask you what you want to name your visualization um, just say training for the time being so once I created the training for the lens it will exist so it'll be like this once you're done creating the visualization it will ask you to publish so publish mean like um, who can actually view this. I'm sure many of you already know. Um, if you want like public information that only for highway, you can just type in highway. So automatic existed. Or if you wanted to show it to I don't know highway D or something. Let's just say highway. let's just say highway D so specifically you can just add and then publish so only people on highway D were able to solve this lens that you created so privacy and we have intermediate if you want to show it to all member in the view or just highways it's, it's entirely up to you and we have the managed collaborator which means you can add anyone you want that can edit this graph that you created let's say you're out for the day and then they need to change this graph or update it then just put on a person's name in here and then they have full access and they can change it however they want that's all entirely up to you to actually do this so after you created the graph on below it will also show you the actual data that used to create this graph so the core responding to each other so let's look at an example that I already created for my own personal reference. Let's say it's the responsible person. So this is all the active project of the responsible person that I created using the graph tool that I just did. So this is the filter that I already mentioned. So once you created the filter existed. So the filter were exactly like the clicking if that's what you want. But mainly the filter is used for the actual table that's more valid use for a graph in general we can just click through it so let's just look at Paul and click through it so we can see all the project that's Paul's working on now let's just click this and this is oh this is tree trimming at various location okay that's the project he's working on Ujo the drag up but after you finish creating the visualization then you can embed it into a story so this is actually a story that we're gonna talk about next but once you create a visualization you can look at the visualization or you can embed it somewhere in the story like I just did for whatever purpose and this is the table that correspond to so this is the filter that I'm talking about which I'm gonna go into depth later so we just finished creating the data lenses and the visualization that I just demo. So right now we're gonna go into directly into creating a story. So what is a story? So to create a story, you can simply create create and say create a story. So a story it's more like your own personal web page or you can put whatever you want on your web page and if you want to use it for your own work stuff and then you only want to see a certain thing that only belongs to you or something you want to check create a story is a very good option so it always asks you for a name of your story let's just say training 2 for now you can name it however you want so after then you create a story this is the page that you'll see so before we start let's look through the template 
So the template is something that's already been built on to help you build your story. Let's just say I like this template. So this, when you click on this template, it has the basic template of how you want to lay out this story. If you don't like something, you can easily just click the X and that will take out the extra content. Uh, if you like to put something insert, you can click content and you can just drag it to however you want. So let's just say my story and you can customize this however you want and then we have style so you can have it now so right now it's expanded but if you click like narrative it got a little smaller and then we have different theme that's already existed it's based on how you want to create your story similarly you have hyperlink and then other stuff that you saw in Microsoft Word they all existed so let's talk about let's go back to how the data links work so let's see let's put on the media text boxes so let's I put it right here so let's click insert so when you click insert it will ask you a couple of things so for this story you can insert image if that's what you want YouTube video, any YouTube video will work. Uh, other stories, so let's say other story, but it asks you for a link. So let's say I want to add in uh, the one that I want for a training, it will look like this. So once you do, you click insert. So it will become like a linkish to another story that another person created or the one that you created. So let's give you another example. Mm. So this is the Crowder's resources. So all these are different story that link it to this story. So this is acting like a um, homepage or the master information that's whole all the other stories that connected to so like again, it's basically like creating a web page. Anyway, let's go back to how this works. Of course, if you don't like this or you make an error, you can always click through it, swap it, clear the content. Let's say you want to swap it. Mean, you swap with another story somewhere in here, but I don't have another story. Yeah. Or you can edit to create another link. It's entirely up to you. But the moment you click on it, it will lead you directly into that story. Just exactly like how web page works. So you can go back. So it will lead you back into the story. But if you don't like this, you can just click clear content. It will disappear. But keep in mind only with the visual icon, only these in the content block enable you to insert any graph or picture and videos. So let's say right now I want to insert a visualization that I just created. Let's say it's a crowd visualization. You can insert a table. A table means a data set that you uploaded. If you want to show you like your Excel, you can upload your Excel and then you can insert the table so it will in this story it will hold that Excel information. It will show all the changes too. And you can have insert measurement if you ever have any. But for visualization it's mostly graphs. So let's say insert graph. Let's just say insert responsible person. So we'll ask you for this graph that I created. Of course you can also insert table. So table is like information. So this is the responsible person that I use. So if I click here, I say insert. So the story here will exist right here. So that's how you insert. But for the story, you can type, uh, you can change it to a paragraph that will turn into a small font. Or you can change into heading six, which is a very small heading and then other style. 
left and right, numbering, same thing. So it's all based on how you actually want to create your own story. But there's a lot of example in Socrata because every single source is directly created from my story. Let's just give another good demo since I'm going really quick. So if you want to delete something, click here. But you need to have this content in order to add in anything. So let's say insert uh, visualization, chart and graph. So these are the reason they update. You can sort it by alphabetically or however graph. This one is owned by somebody else. But since they share with me, I can add it to my own page. Let's just say the link closure, weekend and weekday map. Let's just, I want this. So as you can see, this is the map, which is another form of visualization that you can create if you have the geographic code for it. So once you like this map, you can just say insert. And you can actually see every data in the code. And these are data too, those lines. If you click on the line, it will show you some foreign information. So that is how you create a story. So here is another example that you can look through it. So this is the review page for upcoming. So this is a story that we built that we insert the visualization content table but the filtering, for example, so it worked the same. Let's just look through Albert Chan the same. So if you click Albert, it will show how much he actually approved or not. So he approved a certain closure, says yes. So you click through it, it will say who he's approved. So this is the map, another visualization that you insert into the story. That you can also show these filter by creating it. So you can create this filtering exactly on visualization in the beginning, and then again, there's filter. Let's say creator Brian Fall. When you click on it, it will show everything that's only Brian Fall's created visualizations again. But you can put everything into the story, so one single place that hold everything. So every time there's an issue, you can just always go back to that one single source and then you can also embed link so this is created from embedding a link into it and then you can also have other hyperlink of course when you click a link you can always go to another page exactly how, like how you build your own personal web page for your own personal use so like this is graph that I created using lucid chart and then I embed it right here for my own personal use and then I laid it out however I want call it whatever I want I can even use different colors so I can even say a, a certain link right here but that is how you create a story, create a data lens, and make a certain of graph, maps. That's how you do it. Um, if you have a problem or question, let me know. But ideally, I want each and every one of you try to use any information or already existing crata, or you can upload your own to actually do this physically. The reason is because you want some kind of hand-on experience, or else you're going to forget in the long run. So, so this is something I should demo before, but I'll demo again. So filtering a table to something very specific. So this is what it mean by filtering a table to something very specific. So this is the actual filter, and this is the table information. So this is actually all the project for application. So when you click on the filter, you can always build those filter yourself on um, view, on data view, data lens and table view, you can always build those. So let's say I'm looking for project on Highway D and then apply. 
So once you do, you can see that all these projects in your spreadsheet or the data that you uploaded, the data you uploaded turn into spreadsheet, but spreadsheet turn into, into data. They can go both ways. But once you click on branch D, it will filter on just branch D. So this is everything for design. So as you can see, this is all branch D information. And you can filter it by like application. Very, very risky. So let's say high risk. Apply. So there's three projects for branch D that is in high risk of application. And this project it will be, let's say, the Hana Highway Bridge Preservation Inspection. Accelerator, accelerator. If you're wondering where this data come from, they all come from PSS. So that's why it's very important for you to update that information. So even if you don't update that information, there's always way for us to check. And that is one of the way that we do to check to see if you actually fill in those information. But that is how you filter the table to something specific that you want. You can also do that in table view. But that has to be on the next lesson. So here is another demo video on how you filtering table. Again, the resources is all in Socrata. And myself is also a good resources. Feel free to contact me if you want. But let's just say how filtering table. So this is the actual video how to filter table. Which do exactly what I did. Except the filter is actually on the right side, but I'm sure everyone get the point by now. Going to remove a view from table view in the old-fashioned way, compared to the SQL way. So, what's the difference? So this is the source. If you're wondering the detail about what is a view and then a filtering, this is all here. But for the old-fashioned way, you can only feel it but when you're using these filtering this type basically mean a fielded table basically mean table view but let's say Kawhi step project so when I go to Kawhi step project I have to create edit since I'm the owner of this set I'm I will be able to take out columns and hide it. You don't want to ever remove any columns. You just want to hide it because those columns in the future may be useful for something else, but you just don't want to see in this particular table. Keep in mind, if you want to use it from someone else, you have to click on create view, meaning you're copying that table from another person and then you can transform however you want. But whenever that person that you copy from change the base data, that will also apply to your data. Keep that in mind. So, so how are we going to take out a couple of these columns that we don't want to see? So you click edit, which I already did. And then you click edit here again and say edit column. So when you click on edit column, it will ask you you want to hide that data. So this one is the, the IND, which is the first column right here. Let's say I want to hide this column and say hide this column. Save. So the column will be hide it but it still existed. It just it doesn't you just can't see it in this table and when you post this table somewhere around your story people can't see it. So I can see the INE you can take out let's say you want to take out more than that so when you click through it, it says hide it, and then when you want to bring it back, uncheck, save. And then the IND will just came out right here. Of course, this, you can do it more than one column. Let's say I want to hide this one, but how do I look to another column? You click next. So that would be project number project district name I don't want to see district hide this I don't want uh, state OSR state number face island branch so you can just click through it it will say the name right here on the top as well 
you can even format it to like center to the right or center or left let's just say what is this thing called office okay let's go back to the first one since it's easier for everyone to see let's say for the first one I want to center it by hitting it so that won't do anything I'm hitting it and save so I hide a couple of fields so as you can see so the project so as you can see this all go into the center you can drag this if you're wondering but you can also sort it I'm sure many of you already know that but once you sort it it also apply to the other one so sort alphabetically and these numbers get centered because I did it again as you can see once you actually filtering it or you cite it or whatever the edit won't work so this is the old way that you can easily take out a column but keep in mind once you sort it or something just like what I just did that will stop you from edit because the data got reformatted to a certain way and then the system doesn't like it so consequences you can take out the column but once you take out and you do something to the data the edit will block you so we restrict you from adding that information so that is very important and keep that in mind so what is the SQL way I'll keep in mind if you do it the SQL way you can't do the old way it does its job however SQL is more so cool to be exact it's more of a fancy way to actually do it and give you a lot more control but you can only pick this way or the other way as you I just demoed it to you once I use when I sort it or I did something to here to change the format data that edit will just permanently get block so how what is so cool so cool basically is structuring query languages just like any other MySQL, same thing. It just so called means a crowd of curly languages. But how to use it? That's the main problem. Okay, let's look at another data set, shall we? Let's say I want to look at hmm, the priority type, which I'm the one on this set, if you're wondering. So when you click on priority type, you have to click edit. Again, you have to be the owner to so called this. So you have to click add. Okay, it will take its time. Once add, you will be remember you have to see this draft in order to bring up SoCo because draft means you're the one who changing this information. So when you click on filter, right here is the SoCo query editor. Uh, this one's already used Soko already since I created this by using Soko. So when you click on Soko, you'll have a whole list of columns. So when you run run, you can actually see the table a little bit sort. Let's say these two are blank. I don't want these two columns. You can simply highlight it, delete it, run. And those columns will be gone. Again, you're not it looks like you delete something, but it's not. You're just hiding it. It's just this hiding it, it's look like a delete method. But let's say I wanted let's say I deleted island and branch. Let's say I delete those two. So boom. So island and branch disappear and you can change the order however you want. Let's say I want email first. Let's just put email right on the top. Uh don't worry about how the format actually like bigger smaller you can format however you want you can squeeze them all in the line but just keep in mind you need that little mark in order for it to separate correctly for the sequel to run but when you run you can see the email will be on the front so that's how you take out a column 
using the SQL ways. So once you did, you can run and see the example right here. And once you did, click update. And you can see it's already changed it, the way the format the column. And once you did, you can save, update, and, and once you do, the table will change immediately. So that is how you use the SQL way to take out a column. So same thing, this is uh, another demo for this project. So this is the responsible person that I will originally work on. So let's say there is three. So when I run it, there's one, two, three. So you can run it to do it. Keep in mind, you can always add those column back by clicking right here. So this is all the column that existed. And this is all the one that I selected. This is only the three that I want to show out of, I don't know how many columns there is, but for demonstration purposes, let's do it again. So you click view, filters, my bad, and so go. So as you can see, it's still, you can see all the information. So this is another one from step again. So let's say I don't want to see any of these. I'll just take this all out. I only want to see these three. Run. So this fell because there's another tiny column. So keep in mind the last one has to be blank. So run. So it'll work. So you can see all three of these. There's only these three. Let's say I want to bring back island. So you have to do this. And let's start to the column. Let's see island, island, island. If it's there, should be somewhere here in the column well if you don't can't find it here you can always type it it's like say island so it will pop up run it and you can see island keep in mind there's this thing are very smart so you can auto let's say i'm looking for project id so let's say project so project id run and project id came out and then update As you can see, it's already been changed correctly. Of course, there's further use of SoCo. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with SoCo. But for other resources on how to do it, it's all right here. So this is the Socrata link, the resources that you want. And this is a resource I already mentioned. And what is Socrata, the basic standard, everything. but Keep in mind, every single resources exists in Socrata. And me and Chris and Gina, we also are sources. Keep that in mind. Feel free to contact us if you need help. And that's it for the training.